Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week I am back from my travels. I was at Too Many Games, which is a video game con located just outside of Philadelphia. And I have to say, I had a really good time there. Um, this was my first year visiting as a vendor. And it was really cool to meet with people who knew the channel or who had heard about the channel and um, just show some of the modded consoles that I had uh, available for sale. And uh, it was also really cool to meet a whole bunch of uh, folks who are in the retro gaming world, um, especially a bunch of YouTubers that I got to meet and hang out with. I had a wonderful time with them. And then aside from that, there was plenty of stuff to buy, including this beautiful thing right here. So this was one of my pickups during the weekend, and this is the Sharp Nintendo Television. So for those of you that don't know, Sharp Corporation had a partnership with Nintendo, and they put together this product, which was a Sharp Television combined with a Nintendo Entertainment System on the bottom. Um, so Sharp has a very long history um, in partnering up with Nintendo, and a lot of former Sharp employees ended up becoming employees of Nintendo. One of the most famous ones, of course, is Gunpei Yokoi, who's the inventor of the Game Boy and who has a huge uh, part in, in the, the history of Nintendo. Um, but anyway, so this thing was marketed in the United States. It uh, it's pretty rare, pretty hard to come by, um, and uh, I was lucky enough to find one at the uh, at the Retro Gaming Expo, and it has all four feet. That's something that's really an issue with these, and uh, so what I thought I'd do today is take it apart, give it a thorough cleaning, and show you guys how to disassemble this thing, how to service it, and how similar is it from an original Nintendo Entertainment System. Is it the same thing, or is it different? All right, so let's take this thing apart, and let's find out. But before we get started, let me take a moment to thank PCBWay.com for sponsoring this week's project. PCBWay is my first choice whenever I need PCBs for my retro gaming projects. I can always count on them to manufacture high quality PCBs and quickly ship them out for a fast turnaround time. And now, PCBWay is celebrating their 8th anniversary. There are several coupons, giveaways, and social media events. Check out the details in the link in the description below. So if you want right, the right PCBs for your project, then PCB Way has got you covered. Thanks again for your support, and now let's get back to this week's project. Okay, so I've got the Sharp Nintendo Television turned upside down on its head, and that's because, for the most part, it's pretty much a normal television on the upper half. And then on this bottom half over here, we do have a NES, although it is modified pretty extensively um, compared to a standard NES motherboard. So these Sharp Nintendo TVs are known for having these four feet, which are supposed to act as supports for this whole thing. However, these things are very prone to breaking. In fact, I'm very lucky that mine um, has all four and that they're intact. If you have one with broken feet and you still have the broken foot, it is possible to reattach it. In fact, I've done a video on that in the past. And of course, if you do pick one up and it's got absolutely no feet whatsoever, that's also thankfully something that can be remedied. So nowadays there are 3D printed parts to replace that and I will put a link in the description of this video where you can actually buy replacement feet for your Sharp Nintendo TV. So taking this thing apart is not that bad uh, despite its size. What you need to do is just get a Phillips screwdriver and there's a couple of screws on the bottom here that we're gonna need to remove. Okay, before I start moving this thing, there is one thing I forgot to mention was that right over here, there's actually a little cover and the expansion port on the NES motherboard is actually hiding right over here. And this is exactly like a front loader NES and it's covered with a piece of plastic. This is exactly the same as a front loader NES. And I thought it was kind of cool that, you know, even though that expansion port is totally useless and was never used by anything, even the Sharp Nintendo TV still gives you access to it, so you can do something with it, um, I guess, if they ever had made something for it. So yeah, I just thought that was cool and that I would share that with you. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now that the bottom half is loose from the top half, um, I'm gonna try to like hinge it up and bring it off to the side. It's kind of difficult though, because there is a wiring harness going from the top and the bottom, so the two are still connected by that harness. So I need to just kind of <clears throat> lift it up a little bit, and I'm gonna just try to, yeah, rotate it. Try to rotate it like this. Oh, there we go. And I'm gonna just 
change the camera angle so you can just see how crazy and filthy this thing is. All right, back in a second. Okay, so I have it off to the side here and you can see it is like absolutely caked in dust. This has probably not been touched since <laughs> the 80s and so there is quite a lot of dirt in here. And so yeah, that's why I wanted to take this thing apart because I knew it was going to be filthy and this is the kind of stuff I really hate and I wanted to get rid of it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart further. So there's a whole bunch of Phillips screws that keep the top and the bottom together. So all I have to do really is just go through the top here, find every Phillips screw and pull those out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll be back in one second. Okay, so I got all of the uh, screws out of here. There were, you know, a few in all of these various channels. It was maybe like seven or eight at the at the maximum. And uh, it was actually kind of hard to find them because there was just so much dirt in here. I mean, you can <laughs> just get a feel for how bad it was. And you know, it makes sense. No one's ever been in here probably since the 80s, so I get it. Um, <clears throat> so now they're technically separated. So I can just pull them apart like this. All right, there we go. And now we're a little bit closer. We can start taking a good look at the console. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera angle again and we'll get a better look. Okay, so the whole thing is a bit precarious, but for now I do have the, uh, the NES separated and it's pretty cool. What you can see here is it has its own isolation transformer and power supply section over here. You've got your NES motherboard, which I know is a little bit different from your standard one. Um, down at the bottom over here, we've got our power buttons and reset, and they're totally different. So they're just little push buttons. They're momentary. They're not like latched like the original power uh, is. So that is different. And then you've got a breakout and your controller PCB right here. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a pretty big difference from your standard Nintendo motherboard. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just take all these cables off so I can more easily look at this thing and then we can take it apart and look at it in more detail. Okay, so I've managed to remove the motherboard from uh, its, uh, its shell over here, but I wanted to just take a quick moment and stop and talk about the harness on the bottom because it's very different from a normal Nintendo and it connects up um, to, you know, different spots. So right over here what we have, uh, these are extension cables for player one and player two control pads. So this is, you know, similar in the sense that the, um, the original NES motherboard does this too, but it's a completely different kind of wiring harness than what you're seeing over here. Um, right over here, you've got this two uh, pin connector. This is going to the reset button. This three pin connector over here, this goes to the power PCB, which um, we're gonna look at in more detail in a few minutes. And so this supplies power um, to, to the NES. And then over here, this uh, four pronged uh, connector here, this is audio out, mono audio out, and composite video out. So that's how it goes from here to the television. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disassemble this some more, and then we can have a closer look at the NES motherboard. Okay, so I have this now on my workbench, and I can kind of talk about it a little bit better because now we can easily see what we're talking about here. So over here on the lower left, we've got the power button and the reset button. So if the television is powered on and you press this power button, what I believe happens is that this relay gets energized, and then that ends up turning on uh, the Nintendo. And so now I'm gonna just take this apart. And so you can see that, you know, it has the general form factor of a top loader NES. It has the same usual 72 pin connector and horrible zero insertion force mechanism. Um, unfortunately, this one looks like it did have some kind of water damage over here. So this whole area is dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up with some contact cleaner. Um, and then if you flip over the board, let me just remove the 72 pin connector or try to, there we go. So now you can see, here's the layout of the motherboard and it does share a lot of similarities, but I believe, you know, again, there are some key differences. So, I mean, one is that there's no RF modulator whatsoever. Um, so that's completely different from a standard Nintendo. And I'm sure there's other differences as well. I'm actually gonna be sending out this board to a friend who is going to, um, you know, fully characterize all the parts and how they're all connected, make a schematic, and even, uh, you know, draw out exactly where all the parts are located so that one could potentially make a replica of this board if they wanted to. Um, 
All right, so that just gives you a general overview of how it looks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the cleaning because this thing is filthy and that was the whole point of taking this apart is I wanna get all this dust out of here. I also wanna pay extra attention to this motherboard so I'm gonna get some contact cleaner and a toothbrush and I'm gonna get to work. So everything is clean and I just wanted to show you guys the final result for this board and it looks a lot better now than it did when I first pulled it out. So all I did was just use QD contact cleaner and a mixture of like a toothbrush and uh, some Q-tips and that really cleaned things up. Uh, you know, I used a little bit of alcohol as well and uh, yeah, it's definitely much better than it was when I first got it. Um, all right, so now while everything is drying because I, I use Windex for the rest of it, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the main TV and I can show you where these cables connect to on that motherboard. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the back panel of the television and it's really easy to take this part apart. You just have two screws down here, two in the center and two in the handlebars up at the top. Once that's done, you can just pull this right off. And in retrospect, this is really what I should have done to take this TV apart. It would have been a lot easier because you can take this top part off and as long as the television is discharged, which in this case it is, I haven't used it in quite a long time, then you can go ahead and unplug these wires and you don't have to deal with all of the craziness that I did. So in retrospect, if you're following along, um, I would definitely consider taking these wires and unplugging them from the motherboard first before, you know, taking out the Nintendo. All right, so I've got this thing now um, opened up. So let me reorient it and you guys can take a look inside. Okay, so now that we have it apart, we can take a look at the back. And for the most part, it does just look like a normal TV set. Um, the only difference is these handful of wires over here. Um, so what I did was just take some photos in advance of exactly where they are. And now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect them. So uh, the plan is gonna be to reassemble the Nintendo side of things and then bring these wires into the harness and then close it off. So I can tell you this three prong cable goes right here. This one, which is power, is connected to this little daughter board right over here. So that's not too difficult to get out of the way. This is the audio and video cable. So it's actually broken out into two separate cables. They are color coded, um, so you just need to take a photo and make a note of where they are. I'm not gonna be able to show it to you on camera, but I can tell you the gray one is right here. And then the brown one is right behind this little board right here. Just like that. All right, so that's most of them. There's this final cable right here. And of course, this one's all the way at the bottom of the tube, very far back. There we go. And just like before, I took a photo of this because there's no way I'm gonna find that without a photograph. Um, so yeah, that's all of the cables. So now the TV is totally free from that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just go ahead and reassemble everything once it dries off and then we'll be back in a few minutes. 
Okay, so I've reassembled all the important stuff and I just kind of wanted to show you how it looks in the end before I close it up for good. And I mean, you can see it's a lot cleaner. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's dust that I left behind, but 90% of this dust that was buried in here is now gone. And importantly, I cleaned the motherboard and got all of that crap off of it. So it also looks really good. I was afraid, afraid that that might like corrode some traces or something, but yeah, it looked really good once I got rid of all of the dirt that was on it. So um, as you can see, I've routed all the wires the way it used to be. And uh, putting the wires back together was actually really easy because all of the wires are labeled and all of the connectors are labeled. So you just simply have to match them up where they're supposed to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this thing up, reassemble the TV completely, and then I'll give you a quick demonstration of how it looks. All right, so the TV is fully assembled. So now let me go ahead and demonstrate how this thing works. So when this thing came uh, from the factory, it actually had two custom NES controllers that were, you know, with the sharp colors. So it was like black and red primarily. It did not look like this, although the guts, of course, are exactly the same. So you'd have gotten two of those controllers. You would have also gotten a remote control that would let you toggle between NES mode and regular TV mode. That's basically something that's impossible to find. Really, really hard to find. Um, this one is also missing doors. So there's a door that covers the front over here and also a door that covers the Nintendo bay. Um, thankfully, those are parts that you can get as replacements. They're 3D printed. So I've ordered those and it's the exact same um, uh, person that makes the replacement feet. So let me go ahead and just show you how it works. All you gotta do is just hit the power button. And I don't know if you guys could hear it, it's rather quiet, but the relay kicks on and then the NES mode uh, starts up. And now from here, it just basically works like a standard Nintendo. Um, one thing I can say is, although it is composite video, it does look very crisp. Um, I mean, Sharp always made really nice electronics. And, um, you know, it's a nice 19 inch screen, so it's a good size. It's got a, yeah, good sized, uh, good loud speaker. So overall, I have to say, this thing is really, really cool. Um, you get a premium NES experience and you got a nice uh, CRT back in the day. And um, they're really cool collectibles. It's a part of Nintendo history. And I'm glad that I have it because it'll be part of the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo and people will be in able to enjoy this uh, as soon as next month. All right, so that's it for this week's video. If you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I'll have videos out every Friday. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.